Muna says, is it permissible to interact with jinn, not to harm others, but just like that? The issue of interaction with jinn is governed by the Quran and the Sunnah. We know that Prophet Sulaiman, peace be upon him, asked Allah Azza wa Jal the ability to control the jinn. And he asked Allah not to give this ability to anyone after him. And Allah granted him his wish to the extent that once the Prophet والسلام, was attacked by one of the jinn. So while, while, while in the prayer, he was praying, leading the prayer. So he strangled the jinn until he felt the saliva of the jinn on his hand. And when he concluded the prayer, the companions asked him that you moved in your prayer, what happened? And he said that a jinn attacked me with a torch of fire. So I strangled him and I wanted to tie him to one of the pillars of the masjid so that the children would play with him. But then I remembered the wish of my brother Sulaiman and how Allah granted it to him. So I let him go. So no one, no one has power over the jinn. Now, can jinn be seen in public? The answer is no. We cannot see them in their true form. They can adopt a character such as a dog, maybe a human being, and, and transform into that. And we can see that. But this is very rare. Can they communicate to us? This is possible. There were people who were addressed by the jinn. But such communication is not normal. Can they work for us? The answer is no. They may help us <clears throat> without us knowing. The righteous of the jinn can do things to us and help us without knowing. They can be uh, among those who attend lectures in the masjid and listen to the Quran. Mm, who knows, maybe they're watching us now. This is all possible, part of the religion. This is how they learn their religion. But to claim that we can communicate with them, chit-chat, and maybe WhatsApp them, and that they would serve us to do things we want them to do, this is not permissible. Because they would not obey you unless you worship them. They cannot work for you just because you're a righteous person. Otherwise, they would have worked for Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, and the great companions, which we have no, no uh, recollection of. So having them work for you, as some people claim in Indonesia, in Nigeria, here and there, a man says that he has control over six or ten jinn and they help him diagnose the illness of a patient and maybe offer or perform surgery with his nail and extract things and then put it back again. All of this is black magic. All of this is shirk because this person must have worshipped them, offered them sacrifice. Some of them even step on the Quran so that they would be able to communicate with them or write the Quran in the blood of Mensis, a'udhu billah. All of this kind of black magic and shirk is there. So it is not permissible to go down there or to believe in what they speak or say because they're usually blatant liars. And going to soothsayers who are assisted by jinn just for the fun of it renders your prayer of 40 days unaccepted. And if you believe in a single thing of what they had predicted, then you have exited the fold of Islam.